With all this talk about infrastructure money, uh, a lot of that money, of course, will be flowing soon. Uh, but uh, the Director of Residential and Civil Construction Alliance of Ontario wants to make sure that it can, that that money can get where it's going uh, in, in time. And one of the things that holds some of that back, it holds money back anytime, are environmental assessments. Now, there are reasons why those environmental assessments happen, but sometimes uh, they can delay things an awful lot. Andy Manahan is the Director for the Residential and Civil Construction Alliance of Ontario. Andy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tim. Environmental assessments, I suppose, have taken a bad rap in the press over the years because they seem to hold projects back months and sometimes even years. And when we're talking about getting money into the economy and making sure that it stimulates the economy now, that can be a bit of a detriment, can't it? Well, that's correct. And certainly the, um, the federal minister of infrastructure, John Baird, and the provincial uh, minister of energy infrastructure, George Sliverman, have recently been saying that the environmental assessment process um, has been a bit uh, too much red tape and uh, for example what happens is uh, a project may go through the provincial process that takes uh, a couple of years sometimes and then all of a sudden that triggers a federal process and uh, I think what the uh, province and Ottawa have been saying recently is that um, let's have um, one approval process for one project and that would certainly help streamline um, the whole process but it wouldn't less than any of the environmental oversight for these projects and uh, as our group represents um, contractors and uh, construction workers who get involved with road building and sewer and water projects and bridge building, um, we think that that intention is the right way to go. So you're not saying as people who are involved in the business that environmental concerns are not important, it's just that it's, it's too burdensome when you've got one coming from the feds and one coming from the province and if they could and streamline those a little, we could get that money going. There's a bit too much red tape, and uh, the other thing in the report that was done for us just released yesterday is that um, there should be better integration of the land use planning and the environmental assessment processes, because when the environmental assessment process came out, the land use planning system in the 1970s was pretty straightforward. It was more to do with zoning bylaws and separating residential from industrial and that sort of thing. But now the land use process incorporates all sorts of environmental things. For example, the province has come up with uh, places to grow legislation, so there is a growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, and that has a lot of environmental features in there with respect to protecting agricultural lands and green belts and the like. So we think that uh, we're in a completely different environment than we were 30 or 40 years ago, and we should recognize that there could be a, a more integrated process through the land use planning process to consider those environmental issues as well. We're talking to Andy Manahan, who's the Director of Residential and Civil Construction Alliance of Ontario. Andy, when we talk about stimulation uh, for the economy and all those kinds of things, quite often we start using terms which the general public may or may not understand because we in the media maybe don't spend as much time explaining them as we should. One of those terms when it comes to infrastructure money is benchmarking. And you, can, you uh, sponsored another report that's out this week that talks about benchmarking this funding in Ontario. Does that mean that, that you're saying to the government, okay, let's keep track of where that money's going and how it's being spent? That's precisely it. Um, just to put this into context, uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities has said that there's a $123 billion infrastructure funding gap across Canada. Um, there have been announcements, for example, the province is contemplating a $60 billion uh, dollar infrastructure plan. They're contemplating maybe $50 billion on transportation projects in uh, the Golden Horseshoe. Um, but that's obviously not close to $123 billion. So we need to do a better job of prioritizing how that money gets spent so that we're not uh, spending it on bocce courts, which was a problem in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to really prioritize. So benchmarking would allow us to um, do what other countries like Australia have done uh, in terms of uh, doing performance benchmarking, using measurement tools, uh, and then trying to determine how best to spend that money. And also looking at, and I hate to use the buzzword, but looking at things like life cycle costing. So it's not just the upfront cost, but how do we manage that infrastructure asset once it's built so that it has a longer lifespan. It's a nice way of saying that we want to be able to come back in a year and say, okay, of all of that money that we, that we put into it, uh, this has been spent, that's been spent, and this as much is left, right? Well, for example, um, I've been trying for the last couple of years to get a detailed accounting from the province on all of the spending announcements that have been made, and I do get some 
very large numbers, like, you know, $8 billion on transportation and X number of million dollars on this. But I don't have a detailed project-by-project project breakdown. And I think that's a very good starting point to help us as an industry help the province uh, do what uh, they do best in terms of allocations. Do you get a sense you've had a couple of reports this week, one of the environmental assessments and the other the benchmarks. Um, do you get a sense that uh, people are going to listen to these, uh, that this is a government will actually pay attention? Because... Uh, the other buzzword that's out there, whether or not this is uh, part and parcel of the whole Obama thing in the States, but is transparency. Everybody wants to make sure that what's being done is done on the up and up. Yeah, transparency and accountability are two very important things. Um, I think the province uh, will take certainly a very close look at both reports. Um, we know, for example, that um, with yesterday's announcement of the Green Energy Act, that the province does want to cut the red tape with respect to alternative green energy projects. And I think uh, that should be applied as well to all sorts of other infrastructure because uh, we're in a terrible state right now with the economy and we just can't uh, hope that uh, these projects are going to materialize over the next six months. Uh, more than likely, if it was under the current process, it would be a couple of years before things get approved. So I think the province... Uh, and the, and the people in Ottawa recognize we need to change the way we do business and, and use best practices that have been used in other countries around the world. Andy, a pleasure to talk to you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Andy Manahan is the director of the Residential and Civil Construction Alliance of Ontario.